Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Eid is just few days away and here I am with some very simple yet very tasty recipes you can prepare for Eid. In fact, these recipes were prepared with whatever I had in my fridge and pantry. We will be leaving for a trip in few days, so I had to empty my fridge somehow. So try to create new recipes with whatever I had. Let's begin with a cookie recipe that has a cake texture. In a bowl goes in 1 and 1/2 cups of all purpose flour, then 1 teaspoon baking powder, 1/2 teaspoon baking soda, and 1/2 teaspoon salt. Mix everything with a spatula. Make a well in the center and pour 1 tin condensed milk. Now mix well till you get almost like a sticky loose dough. Do not add water or milk to mix it. This is the right amount of everything you need. To this goes in tutti frutti. I used 1 cup. You may use lesser if you want. You can even use sprinkles, nuts or even a mix of everything in a cup. Mix everything well. It will be really sticky, so mix with a spatula. Now dip 2 spoons in water. Take a spoon of the dough and make a roughly round shape. If you have an ice cream scoop, you can easily make it. But be sure to dip the scoop in water before scooping so that it doesn't stick when you place it on the baking tray lined with a baking paper or parchment paper. Place this in a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius with the heat from top and bottom. The time will differ. Make sure it's light brown shade all over. It will take almost 20 to 25 minutes. Keep an eye on the change of color of the cookie. Now the same dough can be deep fried and I will say this is very addictive. The fried cake or cookie is really tasty and you can't stop in one. All you have to do is heat oil, put the dough in a piping bag with a bigger hole at the tip, press into the oil and cut with the scissors. You can choose the shape or tiny dumplings as well, but make sure you don't drop bigger size balls because there are chances for this to turn brown or burn on the outer side without completely getting cooked on the inside. This turns to be a very crunchy snack and very tasty. So the same dough can be made to a cookie as well as a deep fried snack. It's your choice. Next is another very very simple one I had seen on many videos on Instagram. I had few samosa sheets lying in my freezer so thought to recreate the same here. Take out each sheet and cut to a triangle shape. Then start rolling from this end and put some flour paste to stick it. So do it with all the leftover samosa sheets you have at home. Roll and keep that aside. Make a sugar syrup with half cup sugar and half cup water with one tablespoon lemon juice. Now the sugar quantity depends on how much sheets you have. Here I had almost twenty rolls. Now deep fry the rolls on medium flame till you get it light brown in color. Do not fry to a darker shade because they give that burn taste when dipped in the sugar syrup. The syrup is almost done. You need to boil it on medium flame for 10 minutes. Add crushed pistachios into the sugar syrup. around a handful add the fried rolls into the sugar syrup give a gentle mix and let it soak for around 10 to 15 minutes Now you can place it in a tray or any other way you find attractive. I felt it looked better in a bowl. Now 
This is another addictive snack, very simple to make yet very tasty. If you need to have it more flavorful, you may add few drops of rose water or kevra water or even orange blossom in the sugar syrup while boiling. Next is another recipe recreated from a recipe that I remember trying from a TV show by Chef Vicky Ratnani in NDTV Good Times. This is not the same recipe but a modified version. Taste amazing. This was my husband's favorite among all. Very easy to prepare. Here I've used raw pasta banana. Chop it in small pieces. Then you need sheets and this time I've used spring roll sheets. Place one or two teaspoons of the chopped banana and roll the sheets just like how you roll for spring rolls. Add some flour paste at the end and stick. Prepare all the same way and deep fry till you get a light golden brown color. Now the spring rolls has to be soaked in a mixture and for that you need coconut milk. You can use 1 cup fresh coconut milk. Here I've used 3 tablespoons of coconut milk powder. To that add a 2 and a half to 3 tablespoons of sugar and a pinch of salt for a balance. Mix with 1 cup water. Mix everything and place on medium heat. Now you don't have to boil this, just keep it warm. If you're using fresh coconut milk, you should anyway not boil because it will curdle. And in this case too, just heat till it's lukewarm. That's all. Slice each spring roll in half and keep aside. I didn't have a small glass container, hence using this type, I arranged it in a box. Then pour the warm coconut milk onto it. Now let it cool down and then place in the refrigerator for at least an hour. I had kept it overnight and the spring rolls have completely soaked in the coconut milk. You can arrange it in small bowls and serve those bowls as such. It will be much easier to eat. And this is very very delicious. A must try. Next is a dessert made using watermelon and a sweet milk to have along. For this you need china grass. This is almost similar to the Ruhafsa pudding I had made during Ramadan. Here I've used half of the china grass from 25 grams packet. Soak it in water for 5 to 10 minutes. Now you need watermelon juice. Blend watermelon chunks in a blender without adding any water. You don't have to struggle removing the seeds, straining will help. You need a total of 4 cups of liquid for the china grass you have used. Here I have 3 cups of watermelon juice, add that to a saucepan. Then to another saucepan, drain china grass and add. Now add 1 cup water to melt. Keep the flame really low so that the china grass melts well. Close the lid for 2 minutes and then continuously stir till it melts completely. And this is done. Keep that aside. Now place the watermelon juice on medium flame. And when it's a bit warm, add the melted china grass and mix for a minute or two. Add 4 or 5 tablespoons of sugar and dissolve. And that's done. You don't have to boil the juice. It needs to be warm, that's all. Now pour this to a glass tray and let it cool down. Then keep in the refrigerator for 30 minutes and it will be set. Into another saucepan, add 3 cups milk. Then goes 1 tin condensed milk. To this add 1 and a half tablespoon corn flour or cornstarch. 1 teaspoon vanilla essence. Mix well. 
प्लेस ऑन मीडियम हीट एंड स्टीर कंटिन्यूसली और एल्स इट स्टिक एट द बॉटम आफ्टर थ्री मिनट्स रिड्यूस द फ्लेम टू लो एंड कीप स्टीयरिंग टिल द मिक्सचर बिकम्स अ सेमी थिक कंसिस्टेंसी एंड दैट्स डन स्ट्रेन टू रिमूव लम्स You can serve this in two ways. I like the second type. We'll show that in a minute. Slice large squares of the watermelon jelly, place on the plate and pour the milk mixture on top. The second way of serving is to slice the watermelon jelly to very tiny cubes. add this to a container and pour the milk mixture into it make sure you strain the milk give a gentle mix without breaking the watermelon cubes either way you serve the pudding needs to be chilled and it tastes very refreshing my husband loved the milk mixture in it whereas my kids love the watermelon cubes more So that's all for these simple very easy yet delicious desserts for this eat and I hope you all will try and let me know your feedback do share me on my instagram or email see you with another video until then take care bye bye